Crime Writers On is the podcast where authors and journalists talk about the latest true crime series, documentaries, and podcasts. We talk about what's on the charts and find those up-and-coming podcasts that you'll be talking about. It's like a fun and smart book club discussing what makes good storytelling and teaching how to become a critical listener. Or not. <laughs> and stick around for the Crime Writers Thumbs Up, Thumbs Down reviews. It's the original True Crime Review Podcast. Crime Writers On, wherever you get your podcasts. Like probably right here. Romantic comedies have a lot of similarities. There's a protagonist who can't seem to find love. There's a meet cute and a montage of falling in love despite seemingly insurmountable circumstances and sometimes zany scenarios. But then there's one obstacle that may be too insurmountable to overcome, and that leads to a breakup. Then there's a period of sadness, and of course, a realization that the protagonist wants to be with their person forever. And at some point, someone will run to their person set to an uplifting score. We all know the formula. It's familiar and people love it. But the other thing rom-coms have in common is that they often feature two heterosexual leads. As a matter of fact, before Billy Eichner wrote this movie, there had only been three other queer rom-coms produced by major legacy movie studios. And after Fire Island, this is only the second one to have an openly LGBTQ principal cast. Once again, it's a familiar story. But this time, both of the leads are bros. I'm Ronald Young Jr., and I'm leaving the theater. This is Ronald, and I am leaving the theater after seeing Bros. Bros. Written by Billy Eichner and Nicholas Stoller. Directed by Nicholas Stoller. Starring Billy Eichner, Luke McFarlane, T.S. Madison, Monica Raymond, Guillermo Diaz, Guy Branham, Amanda Bierce, Jim Rash, and Bowen Yang. And for a complete list of the cast, check the link in the show notes. I'm not here by myself. I'm here with... Ben Angeloni, damn, no love for uh, Miss Lawrence on that cast list. Just, Just literally he left her off. It literally says for a complete list of the cast. Jack I know Link you listed Minnesota. every single other one of them. Okay, okay. Listen, there's, there's a uh, we you gotta. Put <laughs> Madison above Miss Lawrence. I go by the Wikipedia page. <laughs> <laughs> so the Wikipedia page. The Wikipedia page is homophobic. There you go. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead the Wiki- Wait. All right. We'll get in. We'll get into it. So uh, for those that don't know, Bros is a romantic. We can hang out here. Uh, Bros is a romantic comedy, of course, written by Billy Eichner, starring Billy Eichner. And uh, man, I already forgot the other guy's name. McFarlane. Luke McFarlane? Yeah, Luke McFarlane, yes. Uh, so, in this movie, it, it follows all the beats of most heteronormative. Ah, see what I did there? there yeah. <laughs> most heteronormative uh, uh, romantic comedies, in that, you know, Billy Eichner is a successful person. He's in New York, uh, but he hasn't found love, and he meets Luke McFarlane, and what follows is a romance tale, a tale of romance. Uh, we don't have to worry about there being a special Patreon episode for this because in a lot of ways, it follows the beats of a very heteronormative uh, 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 romantic rom-com. comedy. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't, couldn't even say rom-com now, but a uh, romantic comedy. With that in mind, what did you think? You know, I actually, I liked it. I thought it was really hilarious. I thought all the humor hit really great places obviously there's like certain things we can dissect and go into 
Uh, but overall, yeah, I thought it was a, a really great uh, kind of first effort of this kind uh, of, of story that you haven't necessarily seen. You've seen parts of it, like you said, uh, but there were definitely like coded parts that I think uh, for the queer community in ways that sometimes, you know, black uh, moviegoers will see in specifically black made movies where it's kind of like, okay, are we opening our community up to other people? Will they understand all these references? Do they have to understand the references or is there stuff in there that's like just for us, you know? I like that because you immediately make me think of like Black Panther or any. It's always one of those things where I'm like, and don't, I, don't definitely don't compare bros to Black Panther. No, 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 like no. <laughs> Whoever's listening, don't don't make that assumption at all. Yeah. That is not what Ron is trying to say. The only comparison there is that as a movie that's like very cultural, there's going to be a lot of references in there that. And I feel like for me, I always watch a movie like Black Panther and I immediately get protective. Was there any parts of you watching this movie that you felt like? Mm, that's not for the straights. Yeah, I definitely, you know, I was going to bring that up later. There were a couple scenes. Um, some of the sex scenes I felt like were like leaning in a little bit too much. And they were a little bit too like, hey, let's explain how gay people do things, right? We want to make sure y'all know it's a little bit different in our bedroom. So let's, you know, lean into the raunch and let's lean into the, uh, not BDSM, but, you know, kind of the, the alternative sexual lifestyle. Uh, that, you know, kind of made me feel a little bit iffy, not like uncomfortable, like watching a sex scene with your parents, but just a little bit like, okay, we didn't have to go that far. That's fair. I feel like there was a few times watching it where I wondered, I'm like, was this, is this a, a queer movie made for straight people? And I felt like, and I, and I was sitting there and I'm like, man, I hope I'm not contributing to the problem by just being in the room. Cause you know how like, there's places like, there's, there's like, there's sanctified black space where it's like, y'all don't need to be in here. You know what I mean? Right. But I had a moment in there where I'm like, well, obviously they know watching bros. I'm like, they know I'm here. And I say that because Nicholas Stoller directed it. And Nicholas Stoller also directed Forgetting Sarah Marshall, Get Him to the Greek, The Five Year Engagement, Neighbors. And he created one of my favorite underrated shows, Friends from College. College, which uh, on Netflix, if you don't know about it, it stars uh, Keegan Michael Key and a bunch of other people. I've never, literally never seen any of those movies. Not a you have. What if I told you that you have? I have. See now, no, I'm telling you. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Which I think one? you. Well, I'm saying I'm not saying that you haven't seen it oh, on purpose. Like I'm saying, style. yeah, I'm yeah, saying okay, okay. based on because I think that was my biggest thing was sitting here and saying I understand why they got Nicholas Stoller for this. I understand why Judd Apatow was directing this right. because I feel like in a lot of ways they were they were really like if we're gonna do this we got to nail a home run and oh, that's yeah. how I felt about Black Panther. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, no, I think a lot of it was kind of intentional tongue in cheek, right? Yeah. Like I definitely, I definitely saw a lot of that in the film, uh, and I, I think they really leaned into a lot of that. Like we know straight people are watching. I mean, I think they acknowledge it yeah. in all the trailers, uh, yeah. especially like you know the setup of an agent telling him he needs to make a rom com yeah. that straight people can watch. It's yeah. very like you know almost meta, even though I hate that word. It's like really yeah. um, the best way to describe it, right? Is it's like. And I think there was a lot of, like, winks to the audience in the movie. Like, yeah. there was a lot of breaking the fourth wall, I think. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the strengths. I think this movie is extremely well written. I think there's, and when I say that, I mean specifically with the jokes and the punchlines. Right. I mean, we know Billy Eichner from Billy on the Street. He was in Difficult People on Hulu. Uh, he's been in a lot of things. And him showing up uh, in this with his pen, his pen is strong. And his punchlines were fantastic. What did you think? Uh, what did you think of the writing? Yeah, I thought it was hilarious. I thought, I mean, I was laughing once every two or three minutes. I could definitely tell it was a Jetta Patel film. Uh, it definitely, like, felt like it. Yeah. Where it kind of, like, borders on the line of, like, almost too much, right? Like, it yeah. doesn't cross into, like, South Park, you know, dick and boobs and fart jokes. Yeah. But it's almost, like, that same kind of comedy where you're, like, just at the line without going over. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I felt the same. I felt like there was... They definitely, uh, there was a sense of, there was a sense of restraint, I would say, in some cases. In some cases, not, I don't yeah. say, but for the most part, I think there was like, there was some, some to be some thought of restraint while doing this. But I also feel like, like, the, I think the thought that wouldn't go away was that I'm like, the movie was still pretty white, 
And when I say that, I mean like, and I don't mean by the inclusion. And we we saw the the, the choices that they intentionally made in terms of casting it, even like right. by having what, what what equates to the United Nations of LGBT right. running the, uh, the actual <laughs> the, the museum. But the like colors of Benetton or whatever. Yeah, right? yeah. It's like literally every LBGT and Q was in the uh, was well, in you know, that room. I actually think that was part of the joke. Yeah. If you think about it, yeah. like because I saw that as part of the joke because. You could tell, like, most of the on-screen characters and the main characters with names were all white and, you know, cis and, like, able-bodied, well-bodied, whatever, you know, right? And I think that that was part of, like, the commentary is they're, like, every time we include somebody else's voices, it's, like, for comedy or it's we got to make sure we're filling out this equation or checking a box. We got to make sure we have one non-binary person and one trans black woman and one you know, bisexual, you know, the guy that kept making the joke over and over again that bisexuals are overlooked. Yeah. Um, And so I thought that that was kind of part of it. I also, I really resonated with the fact that, uh, so I think that, I mean, I guess it's not a spoiler that part of the story is Billy Eichner trying to feel like he is attractive enough or fit enough to fit into the gay culture and be somebody that's desired by gays. And that's totally something that, I obviously identify with and things that we've heard a million times, but I think what actually makes it more powerful and real is the fact that Billy Eichner before this movie was like the schlubby, like not super attractive, not super like well-known famous kind of B-list, C-list who kind of like enters when there's big celebrities around uh, and kind of makes a big deal out of that. But then like he actually like, when did he get sexy? Like, I, I don't remember the moment where I, like, realized, like, holy shit, he's really hot. But he did that for this movie. And I don't know if it was for that movie or if it's just something he's doing in his life or what. Uh, but I think that that parallel of, like, setting himself up for this movie definitely played into some of the plot of the movie. What did you think of uh, Luke? Uh, so we both agree uh, that Billy Ackner did a great job. What did you think of Luke McFarlane? Between uh, 2015 and, uh, and two, uh, 2015 and 2022, Luke McFarlane had 12 Hallmark movies, 12, in which he was the, the, the love interest. And this movie takes a lot of shots at Hallmark. What did you think of Luke McFarlane's performance? McFarlane. You know, I thought he was great. I thought he, uh, obviously, like, he's attractive as hell. You can't, like, not look at him when he's on screen, right? And... I don't have much, I haven't seen much of his catalog. I know he used to be on Brothers and Sisters and my mom would like call me every Sunday and be like, oh, they had a great storyline with the really hot guy. And again, I think that's like part of the movie is that you have this guy that's just basically like eye candy and you're like, okay, well, if if somebody who is not attractive can feel self-conscious about not being not attractive, can somebody attractive be self-conscious about like not, being more substantial or smarter or funnier or any of those kind of things, right? So I think that it it hit on those issues very well with the casting of him. Uh, and I, I mean, I, he's delightful. I thought there was a lot of there was a lot of moments in the movie that maybe oh, you know, and kind of feel like oh, I'm really rooting for them. Like I want this relationship to work. Uh, and it's more of that like oh, I want to be in a relationship like that and be like really cute and stuff like that, or you know do I care about these characters because they're, like, well-developed, you know? Yeah, I think uh, in a lot of ways, I think that he was playing an archetype. Uh, and I think, and I guess I'm curious if that was on purpose. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and, and I guess I say that because, like, I thought in a lot of ways he was pretty forgettable. Like, I thought, I didn't think his performance was as strong as Billy Eichner's. And I know there was parts of the personalities in which they're supposed to be very different. And there was definitely parts where the, the two certainly had chemistry going back and forth, which, like, that was undeniable. And I think the part that actually gets me about his performance is that I think, I'm not sure if in embracing the archetype, he just, it just showed up as an archetype. Because I think that's part of what, what I was watching it. I, I didn't, without thinking about it, just watching a romantic comedy, sitting here watching in front of me, I, I, it just felt like I, when it got to the end, I, I, I thought to myself, well, that could have been anybody, like for Billy Eichner. Because I'm like, really, the story is, is the journey that Billy Eichner's right. on. You know what I mean? Like, but isn't that kind of like what rom-coms are all about? Like, right? Isn't yeah. that just like, um, not Renee Zellweger. What's the chick who was in Sweet Home Alabama? 
Oh, you're a Reese Witherspoon. Reese Witherspoon. Like, yeah. isn't it just like a Reese Witherspoon movie yeah. or any of those other like Hallmark Channel movies that yeah. we're talking about where it's like the same Cam- Cameron Candace Burr or whatever yeah. her name is? Like, Candace Cameron Burr. Thank you. <laughs> it is it is forgettable, right? And yeah. it's like the same storyline repackaged over and over again. Yeah. But it's like, you know, it's like, I'm trying to find a good comparison, but it's kind of like, you know, like junk food, right? Like it's not good yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. not going to stay it's with familiar. you for a long time. Yeah. But it's familiar. Yeah. And in that moment, it makes you really happy yeah. and enjoyable, right? Yeah. And like, isn't that what an escape to the movies is for some of the time, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not opposed to that. I think there, I guess that was the, the, the most prevailing thought I had towards the end of the movie was, I mean, it was, it was very predictable, right. which I think we know. And, I, and I'm, I think that's the part where I get torn on with saying, I know, again, that y'all had to hit a home run for this right. because the last thing you want is for yeah, people to say it wasn't good. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, you can't, like, there's, because the truth is there's been plenty of queer films that have existed before this one, right. you know what I mean, that have been made by by plenty of other folks that did, won't, did not get the press that this one did. Yeah. But this one went through some sort of, like, sanitizing, like, like approval process that allows it to be, like, kind of a big deal right, right. now. Like, they're talking about it on The Bachelor, like, they're getting all this press, like, Billy actors running around doing it all, you know what and I mean? I th- well, I think the thing that's different about this one than a lot of the others is it didn't necessarily, like, sanitize the characters. Like, mm-hmm. I think a lot of other, like, queer cinema in the past has been stories about historical gay people that everybody knows, right? Like, mm-hmm. the Harvey Milks and the uh, Marsha P. Johnsons and all that. And uh, they also were, like maybe acted by queer people, but not necessarily like produced and put together by queer people. And you could tell that this movie, obviously Billy Eichner is gay, but you can tell that the writing team, the acting, the lighting, like everything, you can tell. Um, I mean, I think it's really important to remind people that the entire cast is queer, Yeah. right? Even the ones playing the straight roles. Yeah. And to me, that was really cool because so many times we have this conversation and it comes up every single time you see a new Hollywood movie where there's a straight guy playing a gay character. Yeah. And there's like conversations ad nauseum about how straight people shouldn't play queer characters. And then it's like, well, it's called acting, isn't it? Right. And it's the whole, it's the same exact bullshit that you get with like uh, Halle Belly as, you know, uh, Little Mermaid. Oh, right? oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and so it's the whole, like, well, if if we only wanted people who were this thing to do the movie and play this role, that's not really acting. That's just putting people on camera. You don't want every movie to be, you know, a documentary. Yeah. But I think what was really cool for this movie is they flipped a script on it. Yeah. And they were like, you know what? Y'all have been playing us for so long. Let me play y'all and see how ridiculous it looks, right? And it was, like, almost... The straight couples were almost a parody, yeah. and you could kind of see that a little bit. Yeah. Well, yeah. Guillermo Diaz plays a lot of straight people. He's yeah. playing a lot of straight. Yeah. Matter of fact, he plays Mostly serial killers, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say I was thinking about him from uh, the Dave Chappelle uh, from yes. Half Baked. You know what Rabbit I mean? Up, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like what my most used yeah. gift of all time. Well, that's not from uh, that's not from uh, uh, from Half Chappelle Baked. Show. That yeah, that's yeah, from yeah, Chappelle yeah. Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, like I, I feel like I agree. I think the casting was. It was definitely, I think there was a lot of things about this movie that was a breakthrough. I think if I'm just a moviegoer watching it, I think there was a lot of things that, it, in terms of it being just a straightforward rom-com, I think if I judge it against other rom-com, I've seen better, but I've also seen a lot worse. Oh, yeah, so I think that's where I kind of land on it. Because I, definitely think, I definitely think the com is heavier than the rom. Right? Uh, yes, like, agreed, it was, yes. It was a rom-com that was actually funny and not just like, a couple lines that tickled you, but like laugh out loud, like yeah. spit, like I was spitting, I was laughing so hard, right? But like, see, this is why I think you need to see Forgetting Sarah Marshall, because this is what Nick Stoller does. Like I he, feel like I he's, saw it like on TBS one time. Yeah. So maybe that's why, because they might have like, Oh, they sanitized that. Yeah, they took that out. But I mean, like, this is, I mean, we're talking about, because I'm sitting here watching this, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of beats in this that are a lot like Forgetting Sarah Marshall, yeah. where you have, uh, I think it's Jason, Jason Siegel, yeah. and, um, I also just don't like him. So you I know, that's really fair. <laughs> that's fair. But I'm like, there's a lot of beats in it that felt familiar. And for me, watching this, it felt just a lot like a Nick Stoller movie, where I was just like, oh, okay, this is a Nick Stoller movie. But I think for me, the bigger victor, the bigger success is that the, 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 point of what they're making is that uh and i think we've all said it i think about this a lot with black film is that like black films can be the gamut they don't have to all be great right. 
You know what I mean? They can be horrible, good, bad, because we've had a lot of times for people to make a lot of like right. mediocre films like that run the gamut. Like every black movie doesn't have to be good. And I think the same could be said of like of queer stories. I don't think this was bad by any means, right. but I definitely don't think it was like it did not blow me away, I would say. It's not going to get any Oscar noms. Yeah, no. It, it, it's funny. Even though he had a long he had a long monologue in the middle where I'm like, right. oh, you 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 shooting for the Oscars with right, this one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I actually have to say one of the things that I wouldn't say bothered me, but if we if we do talk a little bit about the casting, yeah. is that, uh, like, you keep saying the word sanitize. Mm. And I think that's perfect for what they did with one of the characters. Again, spoiler free, mm. um, uh, T.S. Madison yes. is known for being a fireball, a spitball, like yeah. somebody who pulls no punches, says exactly what's on her mind, yeah. has a very filthy mouth, which I love. Yeah. But again, like how many F-bombs were in this movie? And yeah. I don't think she said one of them. Not right? one. <laughs> and so like, I feel like they kind of like made a little bit of a character caricature of her as well. And the fact that like, she was probably brought on to be quote unquote comedic relief and like, the like over the top clown and like I didn't see any of that at all from her right it was a very subdued performance yeah <laughs> and again like Miss Lawrence was known on Real Housewives of Atlanta for being the over the top tongue in cheek extremely swishy gay black man yeah right and it's almost like did they remove that from these two characters because the other characters were taking control of that or because they didn't want to criticize for inclusion of oh you only had one black trans woman in the movie and you made her the butt of all the jokes, right? Because we are the worst when it comes to that kind of stuff. Like if you think black people are hard on Black Panther or, or black cinema or any of the, like Tyler Perry or any of that, queer people like, it's not a competition, but we're way worse, right? Because we make it a whole personality to shit on people and like representation and what they did to us and all that kind of stuff, right? What, what would you rate this movie of five stars? Ah, see, I had it ready for a ten star rating, but not a five star. Um, we'll just divide it, divide it in I half, know, right? I, I, I hate saying this because I really wanted it to be more. Because like, I love Billy Eichner, I love his comedy. I your love, rating is your rating. It's okay. It, I had to give it a three and a half. Like, I liked it. I would definitely watch it again. I'm definitely gonna watch it again with my husband. Yeah. Um, but it's not something that I necessarily need to like buy in my Blu-ray library. You know. We are very close. I gave it a 3.25. Okay. So I think we're... I we're we could go that fraction. Oh, 100%. Right? <laughs> like, I, like, there's all the bets are on. 3.1987. I give it a pie rating. 3.14. 3. 3.14. <laughs> That's kind of low. <laughs> no, 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 no. Definitely yeah. three and a half. Yeah, I think it like for me it was 3.25. I think uh like the the parts of it that that got to me was the tropey predictable parts mm -hmm. and I understand that this is a romantic comedy and I will say that anyone who likes rom-coms who <laughs> is also inclusive and a tolerant human will love this movie. This will be you will you will gobble it up. It will be great. Uh oh, for yeah, me I already, I already texted my mom like you're going to love this movie, yeah. right? Like Yeah, yeah. So tell your friends that. But in terms of uh in terms of uh, just me thinking Thinking, me just expecting more and I think that's probably wrong on my behalf to expect more of this movie but I think the ways in which it was marketed kind of pushed me in that direction and it just I watched it and I was like yeah it's a movie you know make it make a hundred of them I don't care and with that leaving the theater is a production of Oats Big Round Studios Thomas Tyra of Bias Studios mixes the show thank you Tom show art from Heather Wilder theme music by the mysterious Breakmaster Cylinder for more information about bros or Ben check out our show notes. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at oh, it's Big Ron. That's at O-H-I-T-S-B-I-G-R-O-N. You can find out more about this show and other Oats oh, Big Ron Studio shows by following us on Instagram at oh, it's Big Ron Studios and on Twitter at oh, it's Big Ron Stu. That's S-T-E-W. Leave it a data. We'll be back soon. Thanks for listening. And thanks, Ben, for being on the show. Of course.